Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a Will I Buy It? Talking about some of the new and upcoming makeup releases and whether I want to pick them up or not and why or why not? So without further ado, let's get started. I feel like releases at the moment are just coming thick and fast. It's like they're never ending. Usually spring is like a huge time for makeup. There's a lot of releases. It's like we're drowning in releases and there's no end in sight. But you know, at least it wasn't tricky for me to find products to talk about in this video. So let's kick this off with the Armani blushes. <laughs> Apparently Armani are still making makeup. Who knew? I mean, that's a bit rude, isn't it? Because I do actually like their lip power lipsticks. I love them, in fact, they're great. And it's about flipping time that they released something I'm excited for, and here it is. About time, Armani, where have you been? But these are the Luminous Silk Glow Blush. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're talking my language, okay? I see what you're doing, I see it. So it looks like we have two, four, eight. That's fast maths. Eight shades of satin finish, natural transparent flush of colour, blushes, fine silky pigments. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah, give them. You know, I mean, these are 100% coming home with me. At least a couple of these. It also looks like it's got a great range of shades, some very fair looking shades and some really nice rich shades. A lovely selection of colours there. Please let them actually deliver what they're promising. If they're delivering me silky, glowy, blushy cheeks. Ooh, yes. Suits you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. If that wasn't clear, it's a yes from me. Uh, yes, please. All has been forgiven, Armani. Welcome back. Next up, I'd like to talk about these matte, all matte obsession palettes from Huda Beauty. I have yet to buy, have I? I think <laughs> I've yet to buy a Huda Beauty Obsessions palette. I have several of the larger sizes. I have none of the little ones. I just, I feel like I, there's never been one that has spoken to me that I've really wanted, that I have been like shoved into purchase town over the fence. It's not happened yet. And I don't think these are gonna be the ones to do it. You know, I've literally just picked up my Velvet Liaisons palette from Pat McGrath and that like, I don't need any more all matte palettes ever again. And I haven't heard great things about these Obsessions palettes. I've heard that the quality is not as good as her larger palettes. Let me know what your experience is in the comment section. I need to sneeze. <laughs> Wowza. But I mean, these look nice. I like that there's a cool toned and a warm tone. They're just not necessarily, they're not necessarily necessary for me is what I'm saying. The sneeze has thrown me right off, let me tell you. Next up, let's talk about this Galon Terracotta Latent Foundation. The bottle looks nice, it does. 95% natural origin product. Long wearing 24 hours. I mean, okay. I suppose if I get lost, that will be handy. Transfer proof, light texture, airy formula, medium to full coverage, 30 shades. I don't see, oh wait, it says the lightness and radiance of a powder, which is confusing because powders to me are like the opposite of lightness and radiance. So I don't understand that. Now the shade range, I'm confused because 30 shades is an okay number. It's about the minimum acceptable number in 2023, but the entire first arm looks like basically the same color. And then the middle arm, like the top half is pretty much the same, bottom half, very few differences between these shades. And I always feel like Galon's shades run overly warm like super warm and even their neutral shades are warm so it's a tricky brand for me when it comes to foundation and the shade range is never quite what I need it to be so I don't know I'm kind of on the fence there's nothing about this that was really exciting me this is a wait for review for me because I just think mm, it's okay I'm sure this is going to take a while to get here I think it's already available in the US oh no it says coming soon available in Europe but not here. So, you know, if this comes here, then the wait for review will be me. I'll be reviewing it for you guys who are waiting for review, aren't you? As a 
poem in there and who can blame me? So yeah, if it doesn't come here quickly, it will be a wait for review. I'll watch some reviews and I'll pick it up depending on how those go. I don't expect this to be amazing. I just feel like Golan's foundations for me have always been underwhelming. So until I learn otherwise and I'm proven wrong, I'm going to keep my like 50 odd pounds for a more reliable brand. Next up, a different product that I thought we'd talk about today. And this is the Pixie Sun Mist. It's SPF 50 mist that can be used under or over makeup, rich in botanicals, antioxidants, and vitamins, protects from the sun, and provides maximum skin benefits. Now, I am intrigued by this one. I definitely want to try this and try it out and see how it goes, see if it destroys my makeup. But I'm definitely skeptical as to whether this is really in any way going to approach factor 50, given the amount that you're going to use as a spray. I don't think it, it can be anywhere near, because you know, we know that SPF in like foundations is pointless because you need to use like, what is it? A, is it a teaspoon? for like your face of product to get the SPF that is in it. And that's in an SPF, a pure SPF product, as opposed to what is like diluted in a foundation. So are we gonna like be spraying our faces for like 30 seconds and fully soaking ourselves over the top of our makeup in order to get enough of a, a mist to get really much SPF at all? That is my question. If anyone knows the answer about this, please let me know. I guess it's it's gonna be better than nothing if you're not going to reapply otherwise over makeup, but I don't feel like it's gonna be much better than nothing because you're just not going to spray enough and not enough is going to actually go on top of your skin to give you anything like that SPF. That is my concern. But if I'm talking rubbish and it actually can apply enough over the top of your makeup to give you SPF 50, then hallelujah, I'm getting it. And I will eat my hat and I don't even wear a hat. So that's how sorry I'll be. I will have to actually go and buy a hat in order to eat it just to show my the depths of my apology and sorrow. Next up, let's talk about this Makeup Forever Skin Matte Velvet 24 Hour Blurring and Undetectable Powder Foundation. What a catchy little name. So this is a reformulation as I understand it. This was a previous powder foundation that there was a lot of hype about. For some reason, they've reformulated it when I believe it was like a really popular, much loved product. So <laughs> that seems like a mistake, but brands just love a reformulation, don't they? I don't know what their problem is. Why do they keep doing that? And why does it always make everything worse? One of the great mysteries of the modern age. I mean, I don't like a powder foundation. They're not for me. I don't love them. I'm rather a liquid. That's just who I am, a liquid girl. So I have no intention of trying this, but um, I may be, maybe I will be persuaded by, I don't know, alarming information that I don't currently have. <laughs> What? I don't know, I this is just not for me. I don't like powder foundations. If, again, I am having to eat my words, eat humble pie, hold my hands up and make a whole apology video because this is the best foundation that anyone has ever used, then fine. But I just don't, it messes with the order I like to do things. It's annoying. I don't enjoy a powder foundation. That just, I'm just, that is a no, okay? That's it. I won't apologize for who I am. Next up, some more glorious, delightful, beautiful, colorful looking blushes, this time from House Labs. I don't know why, but these aren't shouting to me and appealing to me as much as the Armani ones. I think it's like the velvety, they look a bit more matte. They, the colors themselves are all very loud and shouty. And House Labs is, again, one that, I mean, their foundation blew me away. I love it. It's delightful. But some of their other products have been real misses. And the brand itself seems like very, I don't know, um, up and down with its performance. Some products, awful. Some products, amazing. So I don't trust them yet. I don't know, I never know which way it's gonna go. <laughs> is it gonna be joining the awful ones or is it going to be one of the hits? We don't know, it's risky. So yeah, 
House Labs here, we have to order from their US website, even though Sephora is now here. Where's House Labs? We don't know. It's not there. So yeah, I'm not going to pay a fortune to ship stuff here from the US just for it to be like an average blush, you know? So I'm going to need to see reviews and swatches before I go near these. I'm much more excited about the Armani ones for some reason. And let's face it, blush is like the product that I definitely don't need any more of. So it's going to have to be a flipping good one to catch my eye, to tickle my pickle. And I don't know if this is enough to do that. So sorry about it. Next up, these Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturiser Bronzer. What does that even mean? What? A Tinted Moisturiser Bronzer. I'm intrigued, I'm confused, I'm slightly alarmed, if I'm being honest. I don't know what this means. It claims to be a cream bronzer with the benefits of their beloved tinted moisturiser that gives skin the perfect natural sun-kissed glow and 12 hours of hydration. This feels like a mistake to me. It feels like it's not going to work. Uh, it's it's a th like to me a tinted moisture is like a th a tinted moisturizer i'm sorry is like a thin hydrating quite liquidy type of product typically in my mind that is not like a good match for a bronzer i don't know i don't know that's just my feeling i don't know what the point of skincare ingredients are in a bronzer because it's going to go presumably on top of like skincare SPF primer foundation or like tinted moisturizer something and then the bronzer on top none of those skincare ingredients are getting to your skin surely so I don't know what the point of that is um I don't think this is going to go well that's my in my mind this is going to be a horrible mess it's going to mess up my foundation underneath it's going to move about it's going to be patchy it might even just disappear off my face in a few hours time. But who knows, I could be wrong. These are like an easy pass for me. I just, I alarm bells are going off in my head. Red flags everywhere. Next up, let's talk about this Valentino concealer. And I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This is an absolute pass. By as wide of a berth as I can pass it. I wouldn't want to touch these should I happen to find a barge pole lying around. It's a no if that was not clear. I continue to have like a repelling feeling about this brand. I couldn't quite tell you what it is. Every time I see their products, I'm just completely like turned off of them. It's something about like the packaging, something about, I don't know. It's just a lot of it is, it's really expensive products, Valentino products and Valentino price points, but the products are just not delivering. I've yet to see a really great review of any of their products that they've released so far. I've yet to see anyone really loving them. All I see is cheap feeling and looking packaging and not good functioning and performing packaging that they're charging us a fortune for and it just doesn't really appeal to me. The shade range of this concealer is like insane. Like literally there's like six or seven really light shades that all look the same. There's a load of medium shades that also look the same and then there's literally one that's even approaching any kind of depth. I don't understand what was going on in anyone's heads when that was what they came up with. But they have absolutely zero faith that this is going to be a great concealer that in any way I'm going to want to use multiple times after I've reviewed it. So this is definitely a pass from me. I just, the brand is just not clicking for me. It's just not tickling my pickle, it's not motivating me, it's not drawing me in. Every time I see anything from the brand, I'm like immediately, no. I don't know why, is it just me? And finally, we have this little collection from Chanel for spring. We've got an eyeshadow quad, a blush, and a couple of their sort of multi-use sticks, like kind of blush highlighter sticks. Those are not for me. I don't really like those. They're not really my thing. They're a stick and a cream blush, so not my favorite thing. But yeah, just the colors are a bit wishy-washy to me, so not exciting enough for me to want to get involved. The eyeshadow 
and the blush both look glorious. They both look stunning, particularly the blush. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I didn't actually realise these were available until I sort of searched trying to look for pictures for this video and they popped up. They're already on Chanel's website in the UK. <gasps> the blush looks absolutely glorious. It's an illuminating blush that leaves a shimmering veil on the skin, so it's going to be gloriously glowy. Oh, I am 100% getting that blush, I'll tell you that, for nothing. The eyeshadow quad, I just, this is a very, it kind of reminds me of the Shantakai spring quad, where it's got that sort of very yellow shade in there with other colours that don't necessarily look like they're going to work together. I'm very much a kind of, not not a Chanel hater when it comes to their eyeshadows, but they aren't my favourite eyeshadow formula by any stretch of the imagination. So this one, it's an interesting colour story. I think it's very pretty, but I think the reality is probably that it's not going to give me the impact and the pigmentation that I want in order for this colour story to like come together. And I feel like it's probably going to be very similar to the Chantecai one that I already purchased. So yeah, I want to see swatches. I haven't seen swatches or reviews yet. I'm going to investigate. The blush is a yes. The eyeshadow quad is a... Mm, maybe. So there you have it. Those are all of the new and upcoming makeup releases that are on my mind. They're on my noggin currently. Please let me know what you're interested in out of these products, what your thoughts are, what's exciting you, what is repelling you, and what you are absolutely disgusted by. I'm just glad we made it through this video without any penis related products. <laughs> so that was a nice change. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise take care for now. Bye 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 bye.